Today on CCX News, a standing ovation in the Brooklyn Park Council Chambers. The vote that Brooklyn Park City Council members describe as a momentous occasion. The Brooklyn Park City Council gave final approval Monday night to a prevailing wage ordinance. It's considered a landmark vote for the city. Labor union workers wearing orange shirts showed up for Monday's vote. The unanimous approval led to applause filling the council chambers. A prevailing wage sets wages and benefit rates based on market conditions for publicly funded projects. While some point out it has the potential to increase the cost of projects by 10 to 20 percent, council member Tony McGarvey pointed to studies saying that's not the case. The reality is prevailing wage laws foster middle class careers that attract talented young workers to the construction trade, which is especially important now as the baby boomers begin to retire or continue to retire at 12,000 a day. Meanwhile, an affordable housing project that's been in the works for several years will include a prevailing wage component. Decatur Landing will provide 350 units of affordable housing at the southwest corner of highways 169 and 610. It will have two five-story buildings built in phases, with the city requiring a prevailing wage for the second phase. The project could serve as a case study of sorts for how such requirements impact the cost of affordable housing projects. After doing business in one spot since the 1960s, ASIO is looking to expand its city facilities. Emily Haugen breaks down what's next for ASIO City Hall. Established in 1875, Osseo is a blossoming city, ready for a change, particularly in its aging buildings. We're really starting to see this building, especially City Hall, show its age. Shane Michelson, the city's police chief and interim city administrator, has watched the city evolve over the years, and he says it's time for a refresh. For City Hall, it's an age issue. For the police department, it's just people. We don't have enough room to fit the people that we're hiring and adding on to the department. Since last July, the council has been talking about the city's aging facilities. Ordal Architects partnered with city staff to draw up a number of plans. It was about our community and what does our community deserve, what does our community want, and what is our community looking for in the future. Some options pitch putting a community center in Borboom Park. Others suggest adding a dispensary for cannabis sales to a renovated council building. The Osseo Council talked through plenty of options in its April 29th work session, all written down in this packet. But after hours of talking about this, Michelson said in the end, the biggest priority is moving the police station first to here, the Osseo Press Building. This means work will be done in stages. And timeline-wise, it won't start yet, as the Osseo Council considers its options. What will happen is a council decision. But Michelson says they want to hear from Osseo. We need to have involvement from our community, and we really want that. Because he says, ultimately, their decision is up to the people. In Osseo, Emily Haugen, CCX News. We also have a closer look at the options on ccxmedia.org. Meanwhile, the Osseo City Council will have a city council seat to fill. Ashley Mueller has resigned from her council seat due to a move outside the city. Mueller had been appointed to the role, replacing a previous council member who resigned, the late Harold Johnson. The city plans to accept applications to fill the remainder of the term, which is through the end of the year. A prominent spot along Main Street in Maple Grove now has new life. Broadway Bar and Pizza opened last month in the space formerly occupied by Max's on Main. In this edition of Takeout Tuesday, we take you inside this local pizza chain, but this location is unlike any other you'll see in the metro. After a two-year absence, Oh, I think it's great. One of Minnesota's most beloved pizza chains has returned to Maple Grove. It's Thanks. delicious, and we love the spaghetti, too. This new venue on Main Street marks a return for the Broadway pizza name after a former location on Elm Creek Boulevard closed two years ago. For us, it was super exciting to bring it back. Matt Polkamp is the general manager, and he says when they acquired this space, they completely gutted the inside. 
Those who have been to the Clada, who came to Max's on Main, they knew what it looked like. It was dark, it was dungy. Um, it really still had that Irish pub feel even when it was Max's on Main. Their goal was to open the space up and give it more of a neighborhood bar kind of feel where people could bring their families and enjoy one of their signature thin crust square cut pizzas. Our classic deluxe is our number one pizza. It comes with pepperoni, sausage, mushrooms, onions, and green peppers. By far our best selling pizza we have. While this is certainly a great place to enjoy some food and drinks and watch the game. You're going to grab it like this, you're going to rock it back and forth and take it out. This location has a little something extra. When you bring it back, bring it all the way back. Under the same roof is Broad Axe Axe Throwing. A dedicated axe master walks participants through how it all works. Make sure you have your axe up, you know, 90 degree angle. And teaches them proper throwing techniques to enhance the experience. Almost had it. It's really creating that atmosphere of something just to do. We have the axe throwing, we'll have sports playing, we have just a little bit of everything for everybody. This venue has experienced its fair share of turnover the last five years, but folks here are confident that this new Broadway pizza has staying power. So yeah, everybody's very excited about it. Broadway Pizza's axe throwing experience is $40 per person and requires reservations. For a link, you can go to ccxmedia.org.